when a person is trying to fix their mind on the mantra, then they slowly move towards the state of ekagrata, one-pointed attention. So, but before that point of ekagrata, then the samskars of previous activities from the subconscious mind, they are just in a chain coming and going and then that thought is connected to another thought and another one and connected to another one so in this way from the subconscious mind impression is coming and triggering another impression that that's going and then the next one is coming one after one so this is why it's very important to hear Harikata and to study Shastra because even in the mm, condition stage before Ekagrata then when you are chanting because your day was filled with hearing Harikata and studying Shastra, then this impression starts to come into the mind. Your thoughts are like echoes of previous activities in this life and previous lives. So if your previous activities were serving the deities, always dancing in Kirtan, visiting the holy places, or studying Bhagavatam, then naturally these impressions will come in the mind. <coughs> so these impressions are very favorable to go to Ekagrata, one point of view. Material impressions, there may be Rajasic, Tamasic, or Sattvic, but the spiritual impressions, they will uh, make you go towards the Nirgun state. Mm. Then, when Ekagrata comes, one pointedness, then your mind, there will be a little movement of the mind only thinking about Siddhanta. Hmm? What is Advaya Gyan Parata? What is Vijati Abed, Sajati Abed, Swagat Abed? Hmm? What is the meaning of Achintya? Hmm? What is the meaning of Aprakrita Pran? Huh? And you do some Tarka. That means some mm, argument, but based on Shastra, is going on in your mind, trying to understand. And which are deliberation on the spiritual topics. And then when this dies down, even, then you don't have any thoughts at all. We want to come in this state. Hmm. Just like when you eat food, it's digested by the stomach. So when the mind becomes steady, it dissolves. So by chanting Harinam, you have to dissolve your subtle body, then you have no head. We were explaining yesterday. To have no head means you dissolve your subtle body. So then there are mm, 
practically no chitta vrittis at all, waves in the chitta. Maybe a little. But in that state, the chitta is steady enough, and when you are chanting, you won't need to think of anything because you see, start to see the form of Krishna. And as you f further go through Nishta, it, the form of Krishna will become clearer and clearer. But it will be some quite opulent experience. And as Ruchi come, is coming, then you can realize how sweet Krishna is. Hmm? So then you don't want to think about anything, you just watch what is Krishna going to do then. So it's very important to have Abhed Buddhi. Abhed Buddhi means the conception that Nam and Krishna are same. Your speculations are not necessary. You are not Karta, you are not the doer of Bhajan. Nam will do everything. So don't be worried when you are trying to become absorbed in the vibration of Krishna's name. Uh, if some thoughts are coming, let them come, let them go. Slowly they'll go down and you'll feel your mind will start to dissolve. If a devotee is advanced, then their mind is already dissolved. So they just sit and chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and all realizations are coming. But if you are not having realizations, then you have to sit for two hours, three hours, four hours without moving and constantly chanting and completely surrendering to Nam for the mind to start to dissolve. So that is why we are insisting that all devotees every morning, we've been sitting over two hours now, but without moving, try to completely take shelter of Nam Prabhu and uh, some progress will come. Otherwise, by casual and lazy and uh, neglectful chanting, you can do that for many, many lifetimes, but you will not realize anything. One day you have to think, I, I want to be like Dhruva Maharaj. Completely fixed, not moving, and surrender for little mantra. Like Dhruva, without eating or drinking or sleeping or breathing. <laughs> So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very merciful, you don't have to be quite extreme as Dhruva, but at least that mood hmm, of the determination, some drop of his mood of determination must be. So, his life will come soon in Bhagavatam. Every chapter, every history of Bhagavatam is arranged in such a way to give us all the things that we need to become perfect in the uh, Prema Bhakti to Radha and Krishna in Brajan. So, everyone come at 10 o'clock for the next installment. Uh, oh, last night, what were we discussing? The verse is spoken by Matu Ramanis. 
What's the first verse? Punya Rishi. Punya. Yadayam Rilinga. Buddha. Quran. Quran. Banna Chitra Malaya. Okay, so he's trying. You have to be like this. When my Gurudev gave class, everything he said I wrote down and tried to memorize before the next day. Otherwise the next day he'll say something else and then there'll be a backlog. So you have to you have to keep up. Huh? We try. You see, Dina Charan he noted it down and he's not uh, fully learned it yet, but the shape is there. In a few days it will be with him for the whole life. Hmm. These verses of Bhagavatam are Bhakti Rasayan, the tonic. When a person was very sick and dying, then you know, they recover from the disease. So the disease goes away, but they're still very weak, so they cannot actually live their life fully. At that time, they have to take the tonic to get full strength. So, you are not dying in the material karmas, because you are in Braj with Vaishnavas and trying to do bhakti all day. So, you are recovering from material existence. But you are not strong. So, you have to drink the tonic. Hmm? Take a good dose of tonic. And then you can become pretty strong. Uh -huh. So, this tonic is very delicious. So you, you have to take it into your heart. So anywhere you are, you can sit. Dan punya bata braja bhuvo yadayandrilinga guda purana purusham banachit kamalya gapalayang sabala kwanayang stabenam dukri dayanti tikarinda ramachikan vi menchan hare krishna hare krishna. And then the thoughts of the thoughts of each word and each mood while you are chanting, they'll come in your mind. And if you are in the level of Asakti, then when you say the verse, our mature enemies will appear. Mm -hmm. And then what they inside, outside they're seeing Krishna fighting, and inside they're seeing Krishna's fight. In Vrindavan. And seeing how gopis are doing their housework, absorbed in praying. So in the stage of Asakti, when you meditate on a verse like this, then you see everything. This is called Mantra Mayu Upasa. So you cannot go directly to Astakale Lila Smaran. Mantramaya Upasana are the steps which lead to the Astakali Lila Svan. So each one of the verses of the Bhakti Rasayan from Bhagavatam is the one step on the path to Astakali Lila Svan. They are each Mantramaya Upasana. Now here, take inside and make your samskars, and then later in your life you can do bhajan. If you don't make the effort, then later in life you'll sit and Russian cinema will come. Hmm? Or Indian cinema. <laughs> or Mexican cinema. Hmm? So now absorb your mind fully. 
See, he knows the first name. And before that, go Pyastapaki Macharad Yada Musarupam. Lavanya Sarama Samodama Ananya Siddha. Okay. You have to drill every day. You pull out your slokes and read again and again and again. Chant Harinam and you can remember them also when you chant. When you're in the shower in the morning and you recite the When you're taking prasadam, say Namrita Pao Radha Krishna Guna Gao. Take prasadam and sing the, the glories, the qualities of Radha and Krishna. All the time, Avesh, absorption. Then there's no chance for Maya to come. No, no. The Panchati dictionary is for Vishay, that is what it's for, it's for Vishay Sambandagya. It is for this. Um, but uh, if someone is in the Ramanuja Sampradaya or another Sampradaya, where the relation is with Lakshmi Narayan in Vaikuntha. We'll, we'll give Vishesh Sambandha Gyan. But in our line, you cannot get Vishesh Sambandha Gyan from the um, Vaidhi Bhakti alone will not give Vishesh Sambandha Gyan because Krishna in Vrindavan has no relationship with Vaidhi Bhakti. Krishna is only approached by Raganuga Bhakti. So, uh, one has to follow the process of Pancharatri Diksha with the support of Sadhu Sangha and Harikata by those who are in Ragamag. Otherwise you can realize Krishna in Golok, but not in Braja. Uh, so only the opulent uh, aspect of Krishna in Galok can be realized by Vaidhi Bhakti. But if you practice Vaidhi Bhakti under the guidance of those in Ragamark, then gradually you develop some greed and uh, then you can realize through the Diksha Mantras your Vishesh Sambhan. In Braj. Realize Vishesh Sambhan, ah, your particular relationship with Krishna in Braj, not in Golok. Without Braj Rasit Vaishnava Sangha, no one can realize the moods of Braja. Sorry, I just want to ask something. I don't want to make any offenses, but uh, I need to know because it's always in my mind. Because you know, we have uh, no women in our group, and uh, no women, we have to stay in the bar, and uh, we are last to fill in or something. And uh, I just want to know why, because like, if I always have to don't identify with my body, Still, I remember every day that I'm less important, I'm a woman, and uh, 
Why? You must know you are soul. <laughs> if you are think that you are body, then you are less important. <laughs> yes, but I'm sorry. Uh, том, что... Я не хочу совершить оскорбление, но все-таки это важно для меня, поэтому я задам этот вопрос, что а, женщины должны стоять за мужчинами, потом они должны... Мы предлагаем пятерки после и ну, вообще такие вещи по этикету, что ну, как будто бы женщины менее важны, но, но при этом мы не должны отождествлять себя с телом, но все равно я об этом думаю. Как бы эти Spiritually, everyone is equal. А в духовном смысле все равны. But materially, the male and female have different roles. We're not only superior and inferior. They have different roles. Because the body is different, mind is different, everything different. Even your eyeballs are different. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Men have more receptors in the retina of the eye to detect movement. <coughs> so generally they're better at physical things and sport. And women have more receptors in the eye for colors. So when they see a very nice sari, they go, oh. <laughs> So what to speak of a mind, even the physical body is completely different. Hmm? How men see, how women see, how men think, how women think is completely different. This is not a, even a matter of discussion. You can take the cells under the microscope and see biologically all of these things. Okay. All moods and everything uh, for the conditioned souls that come from the hormones. So if you have more testosterone, then your tendency is to move around here and there and uh, challenge the environment. And if you are female, then you have more the oxytocin. Then you feel happiness when you decorate a place and stay in one place without going here. Make a nest. <laughs> this is nature. So anyone is uh, has to, if they want to become liberated, they have to act according to their nature and then within that nature, do bhajan, and then they'll transcend it. So Varnashram Dharma means you live your life outwardly according to the nature that you've acquired by karma in a very steady way and then do in that peaceful environment, do bhajan and then go above it. It's not, it's not true that there are no women in the Guru Parampara. This is our Bhagavad Guru Parampara. So, uh, all the Acharyas in this Bhagavad Guru Parampara, they are men, it's true. But in Pancharat, in the different Pancharatic Paramparas, there are many women. Uh, there's about five women in Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Diksha Parampara. Mm -hmm. Janava Thakurani was Acharya Guru. Krishna Priya. Hemalata Takarani, Ganga Mata Goswamini. So there are so many. In Braj also Mirabai. And uh, yesterday we we're hearing the prayers of Kunti Devi. So the history and Shastra is filled with female saints. But in our worldly activities, uh, there has to be some uh, separation. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have nitro and glycerin and you put them together, what happens? Dynamite, explosion. 
So when the male ego is next to female ego, then there's attraction, like uh, the magnet and iron. So by un uh, undisciplined, unprincipled association between male and female, both of their egos become inflated. Which is the opposite of spiritual life. Spiritual life is ego should be dissolved, not increased. So there are some rules of some separation in the social functions to protect both from the natural reaction. And so, then in any activities, someone will have to go first and someone will have to go second. Because there's two, and they have to be separate. So one has to be first and one has to be second, right? You, it's not avoidable. So generally in Vedic culture, uh, when marriage takes place, uh, then the girl is the young. Uh, even she's married before her period starts because when period begins that means her body is saying I want to have a baby so if by then she's not married then her nature is being oppressed and then it causes psychological problems and become very aggressive <laughs> and unhappy. So the girl will be somewhat younger. And her husband, he will have completed his education and become established financially, economically in his uh, occupation. So that the girl whose body is saying, I want to have a baby, doesn't have to work in a factory and support herself and the baby. Understand? So this is Vedic culture. It is according to the nature, what is kind and sweet for everyone. Mm -hmm. So because the husband will always be about five or ten years older than his wife, so the men will go first, because there's some reverence to a senior person, there's some reverence. So if a person's mind has become contaminated by postmodern uh, feminist propaganda of the Frankfurt School, uh, which is meant to destroy society, then they look at the Vedic culture and interpret it through that. Social engineering. Uh -huh. But if you understand deeply the Vedic culture, you will see it's not oppressing anyone. It's giving everyone the best chance in their life. Mm -hmm. With full care, with full sympathy, with full affection for every single person, whichever position they're in, whether they are sudras, the laborers, or the warriors, or the, the, the brahmanas, or male or female, the right prescription is there for the best chance for everyone. Okay. So Vedic culture is very nice. And this is only Varnashram Dharma. Bhakti is above that. Huh? But in the beginning, the Konishta Adhikari has Kinchit Adhikar. That means some eligibility for Varnashram Dharma. So they should follow Varnashram Dharma outwardly, and that will be a platform, peaceful, organized life in which they can practice bhakti and then transcend. So there's no discrimination against anyone. There's discrimination 
on the uh, to help everyone. Kali Yuga is a big mess. Kali Yuga is a big mess. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask um, if Bhakti um, is uh, practiced without consideration for what is so important. How come it is legitimate uh, to have a desire to see which now it is? Если мы стремимся заниматься бхакти бескорыстно, не заботясь о тебе, не о себе, то как тогда мы можем хотеть увидеть Кришну, не является ли это таким желанием корыстным? It is not desire to see him like seeing an animal in a zoo. Желание, которое мы хотим, это не желание увидеть Кришну как зоопарк из зверюшек. It is the first and foremost desire to serve him. But if you can't see him, how will you serve him? And uh, when devotee is very advanced, they feel separation. So when they feel separation, they want, oh Krishna, when will I see you again? Uh, so that seeing is not It's the only by upalakshan. It means seeing and serving and all pastimes and everything. Okay. You see, if you are in love with someone and you say, when will I see you again? Huh? Then if that person said, oh, I will appear for one second and disappear, you will not be satisfied. So seeing does not mean see. Seeing means to have a relationship. And relationship with Krishna is only of service. So unless one has a pure service mood, one cannot see. He never reveals himself to anyone who has selfishness. Only 5,000 years ago, when actually In the year 3228 BC, when Krishna appeared on July the 19th, then at that time anyone could see him, even those who didn't, even the demons could see him. But outside of the time of his avatar, his descent, then without uh, the pure mood of service, it's not possible to see. Uh -huh. So Prabhupada Bhaktisna Sotaku used to say, don't try to see Krishna, try to behave in such a way that Krishna will want to see you. If you are serving all the time, then Krishna will reveal himself. Gaur Premanandi, 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 Gaur Preman